Hello, I'm Vince Mazur and I'm a product marketing engineer here at Altium. Today we're going to talk about components and bill of materials. As I'm sure you realize, components are foundational to your ability to get your projects done on time, under budget, and with a feature set to specification. And when a designer places a component, they inherit all of the risks and characteristics associated with that component. Most of these are largely out of the designer's control. Some of these include cost, availability, quality, reliability, performance to data sheet, and more. All of these characteristics represent touch, touch points of risk that if not properly managed can result in delays in development, late product releases, and in some cases even some spectacular field failures. Some of them are unavoidable, but if you pay early and often attention to your bill of materials, you can help mitigate many of these. In this video, I'm going to touch on some of the common component related problems we encounter. I'll introduce some guidelines for coping with these and I'll even give some specific techniques designers can use for specific design solutions. So let me launch right into component problems. Certainly we need to find the right components. We need to make sure they're in stock. You don't want to find out that say a microcontroller or a key part of silicon is unavailable. You don't want to hear this from your contract manufacturer. That's not a great time. Um, you want to make sure that your components are environmentally compliant. You want to identify risky components, components that, that may have an uncertain future, they might, have an, they might not be recommended for new design, etc. Counterfeit components are an increasing problem uh, in the electronics community. And of course we always want to design to cost, and cost is an important metric, and life cycle is important as well. You know, is this a new component? Is it going to be available uh, at a, at a, in a time space that works with the useful life of your product, etc.? And you, you don't want to have situations where, unknown to you, your silicon vendor actually margin enhances their silicon and it doesn't work in your product anymore. I can give you um, an example of that later. So let's talk about bill of materials. Uh, bill of materials in the past has been treated almost like a post-process afterthought, something that you include with your Gerber files and your NC files. It's actually a very important part of your design. You know, the schematic is where you address your, your logical, functional design. Printed circuit board is the physical implementation of that behavior, if you will, and the bill of materials represents the sourcing of the components needed to realize that printed circuit board assembly. Like a three-legged stool, if any of those legs are compromised, your entire assembly is going to be compromised. You can have the best market differentiating design, but if you don't have the components to build that, you got a bit of a problem. So let's talk about some guidelines that you can use to mitigate some of these issues. Frequent bomb checks. Like I said, bombs typically uh, you decide on your components early in the process, you work through that, you get your prototypes, and a lot of times it's not really looked at till closer to the end of the process. Recommend that you check that bomb early and often throughout the design process. Component supplies are fluctuating just like airline tickets. Flag components that are risky. Better yet, use an automated tool that can get that data for you so that you're not designing unknowingly with something that's near its end of life, not recommended for new designs, or is only supported by a few uh, suppliers. There's no second source ability. Anticipate difficulties. And this brings in this definition we have here for contingency. Really, we're talking about contingency planning here. Develop contingencies and anticipate difficulties so that you can get to your destination even when the worst scenarios are thrown your way. 
consider holding stock. We had a component that we had to search for. Uh, it was very important. It was a diode, had a very incredibly low leakage current. And unfortunately, because this was a, a legacy design, if we didn't use that particular diode, the device could turn on automatically when it was in a high heat environment. So uh, even though this was a three cent component, we weren't gonna ship our product using the former component. And we found that we were having, we were seeing that we could get some of these components one month, but the next month we couldn't. We just bought several reels, threw them in a cabinet, the cheapest insurance plan you could ever have. You do not want a three cent component holding up your assembly. Beware of popularity. Popular components are in more demand, means they might be really good, but you want to really balance popularity with availability and cost. So now I'm going to move into some specific techniques that designers can use for some relatively straightforward situations. Uh, the first two uh, are the idea of combining discretes uh, to minimize the number of unique uh, line items you have in your bill of materials. Sometimes this would land up increasing the number of placements on your board, but there, it may be worth the trade-off in having a smaller number of unique line items, which generally leads to lower assembly costs. Uh, you can do that with capacitors, inductors, etc. The uh, Transistors here represent the idea that when you're doing switches or any type of power control, you're doing transistor switching, you have the opportunity to develop bias values that allow, allow a wide variety of, of transistors to, to be put in that footprint. So again, it's giving you alternate approaches, alternate routes to your destination. And then finally, below we have two printed circuit board techniques, basically the same concept. Use design variants for components that you might not be able to get. Like in the first one, we might be able to get the one, the 1206 resistor, uh, but we can't get the 0804. And, and you have um, the option of of using whichever one is available at the time you commit to manufacturing. Below is a more extreme example that can be useful. You're actually substituting a through hole part for a surface mount part because to wait for the surface mount part may not be acceptable. So that's a price that may be worth paying having that manually inserting or even having your team do that yourself. So that's basically all I wanted to cover today. Uh, just want to summarize again the bill of materials has traditionally been a downstream afterthought. And there's, there's an increasing supply chain complexity and of course product complexity is increasing. And just, just that in itself is, is, is improving the probability that the needle may find its way into the haystack and, and you could be impacted by these types of risks. Um, Frequently checking your bill of materials early and often throughout your design process can help mitigate these circumstances. And the companies that pay attention to these fine points, uh, I believe, are going to be able to outpace their competition. And just like football games are one with the fundamentals of blocking and tackling, paying closer and more frequent attention to your bill of materials and your component selections can pay big dividends. I really appreciate your time uh, watching this video and I hope it's been useful for you. If it has been useful, certainly we'd appreciate any comments below uh, mentioning how we can improve the content, whether this was useful, and certainly would appreciate your forwarding this to your colleagues and fellow designers. And finally, if you find this type of material useful, uh, please consider subscribing to our channel. Thanks a lot and have a super day.